Now, we're here in Mark 5. So Jesus immediately goes across the lake and <clears throat> verse 22. Well, let's just read 21. Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, which is Capernaum. Much people gathered unto him. He was nigh unto the sea. Now remember, we're talking about he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Oh, he's so easy. He ain't hard on anybody but the devil. That's right. <laughs> Boy, he's hard on him. Behold, here cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now this is Jesus' hometown synagogue. Now we have record of him preaching in that synagogue. And the Pharisees got all bent out of shape because he did something on the Sabbath. But now he, J. Iris, who only lived less than a hundred yards away from Jesus, right there, right next to the synagogue. And uh, he saw. He saw this man stretch forth his withered hand. Made the Pharisees mad, but it didn't make Jairus mad. It didn't bother him. It's the real religious guy. He's ruler of the synagogue. These guys are very demanding. And so, well, you know the story. So now we know why Jairus had this kind of faith. He heard Jesus preach. Oh, man. Besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse when she'd heard of Jesus. Now, what did she hear? Well, we know she heard the word because faith came. There, there's some, some absolutes here that we know about her. Came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, the Greek word is lego, which means she kept saying, she kept saying, she kept saying. And I think about the little Lego blocks, the little building blocks. And so she's building faith. She's building faith. She has kept saying, and she kept saying, and she kept that, saying. That works for us too. Oh, yes, ma'am. Keep saying. Don't start saying unbelief. Don't quit. Amen. Hallelujah. Say it. I receive my healing. Right now. I receive my It's healing. mine right now. Right now. Right Immediately. Now. Yes. Right. I, I take it now. I take it now. It's mine now. Okay. Yeah. And Thank you, you, Lord. And just say it and say it and say it. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> quit. She came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, she kept saying, If I but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, immediately. immediately, the fountain of her blood dried up. Then she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power, dynamis, had come out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Praise now, one thing we know for absolute certain, 
Let's back up here now. Twelve years suffered many things of many physicians. Spent all that she had. Now here again is someone, uh, Brother Rick Renner told me, he said this word translated plague, he said it, it means it, it'll go away a little while and then here it comes back worse. It'll go away a little while and then here it comes back worse. Twelve years! Well, we, we use that word that way. We say that just plagues me, you know, over and over yeah. and over. Something irritating. Something that comes back and yeah, back and back yeah. and back. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so here again, we know that she's skin and bones. And we also know she forgave those doctors. Because mm. faith doesn't work in an unforgiving heart. Praise God. Amen. Now, Thank you, Lord. I don't know what part of Capernaum she lived in, but it was on the road that goes to the synagogue and then to Jairus' house, which is right there next to Jesus' house. And so she's close, but she's shut in. Now, because of, of what we we're beginning to learn here, we, we can, other things come up that are, that are very, 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 very obvious. Like her forgiveness. She's weak. She's uh, got some fear about her because now she's, she's going to have to get out and touch that garment and it's illegal for her to be out there. She could be stoned yeah. for that. But she, her faith came to the point. It was her faith that moved her out into the street. She intended to sneak up there, touch that garment, and wrap it back into her room. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And that day, say that day. That day. Her prosperity angel <laughs> began to work to restore her financially. Because she was broke and destitute. Praise God. Somebody was relaying his messages from the synagogue over to her. Now, we won't take time to turn there, but the men that carried the man in his, in, in that uh, blanket, whatever it was, a tarp kind of a thing, that was in Jesus' house, and it was Jesus' roof that they broke up. Now here's something the Spirit of the Lord just dropped into my spirit not long ago. And we you know, but, and when God does it that way, it's not just an idea, because I had a lot of ideas about this and pictures in my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and particularly listening to Keith and all, and others and the things we've thought of, and they're all good things, don't misunderstand. But the Lord literally dropped this into me and said, no, he was in the same position that this woman was. Right there in the same town, right there in the same proximity, and he's getting messages relayed to him. <laughs> he contacted the other four. They didn't contact him. He said, now, now guys, I got to get over there. I got to get... I have to get in front of Jesus. I'm going to be healed of this. I've been hearing these, these testimonies. I, I've been hearing, you know, uh, they've been relaying messages to me, and, and you guys have been relayed messages to me. You've been over there and heard him preach. And, and I, 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 I got to get there. I got to get there. You're just going to have to pick me up, and you just have to carry me over there, and you're going to get me in there. And then they got over there. <laughs> And they said, uh, Bobby Joe, um, we can't get inside. There are too many people here. See, this, this was not a hostile crowd. I used to think it was. It wasn't in the synagogue. They'd come to hear him. Place is jammed out. 
Like I heard Keith say one time, finest donkeys in the land were parked right out there in front. Some of them double parked, bro. They couldn't get in there. Hey, man. They had come from the whole region round about. And that's a big house. A eh, whole lot of people. Anyway, <laughs> glory. And they said, uh, we can't get in there. What are we, uh, what are we gonna do? One, and one of the other guys said, well, we ain't got anything left to do. Let's get up on top of the house. He ain't gonna carry us his house. And we, you know, we know him. We know him. He won't care if we bust up his roof. <laughs> and we're going in there. And he said, all right, that's good. So, Whatever you do, don't drop me off this roof. <laughs> I'm out, you know, I'm bad enough shape right now but it won't really make any difference if you do drop me and break my leg. I'm walking home. <laughs> I'm going out of here healed. Praise God. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. And Jesus is standing there preaching. It. And it, it, before, before, I mean, while they're still letting him down, can't you just see him? Son, cheer up. Your sins are forgiven you. Now, I, that see, was I, I see you looking up at the roof and there's a leg coming through it. <laughs> <laughs> and then another leg. And then an arm. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> she was standing preaching in Tallahassee, Florida. In city auditorium. And she was standing there, <laughs> had on that pretty navy blue suit. And she went, it's raining on my bottle. <laughs> A tornado hit that thing and ripped the roof open right over the top of her head. And you think she jumped run? <laughs> And John ran up there, and of course the auditorium people, just, they were in a frenzy. They just wanted to jump around everybody. And, no, no, and the people just kind of sat there and just, I mean, it's raining in. <laughs> and you can imagine the noise. And I thought the worst thing about it was, my Bible's getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> and so they came in and they said John, to John, uh, now, I, I, I know you want to get these people out of here, and, and the, the healing school's over, right? John said, you don't know my mama. <laughs> so, he, and so Gloria said, okay, everybody, she's holding her Bible like this, okay, everybody just, just follow the people here. And she stood there until everybody got out, and everybody was very orderly, and there were pieces of junk that fell out in the parking, huge pieces of corrugated steel fell out in the parking lot, didn't touch a car. <laughs> and they went on downstairs and one of the most powerful healing services that you ever preached. Yeah, we kept going. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The healer was in the house. Praise God. And it showed it in the paper. Of course, for, I, I, I like to forgot this. First thing she did, she ripped into that storm. I mean, she, she in, broke the power of in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came out in the paper. They tracked that tornado up to the convention center, and that's where it stopped. The Spirit of God and Gloria Copeland's mouth Kill that tornado Praise right there. God. Thank you, Lord. And the angel, don't discount the angel. When you make the charge, that's when the angels charge. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody's ears popped open right then, just as, just as I said that. Glory to God. Thank you. Oh, I see it. I see it. Nervousness. In case of nerves, you just, just up tighten sometimes it just make you want to just jump up and just run out of the house. Others it just, just gets down on you where you want to just close all of the windows and, and stay in the house. Heal! 
healed and delivered right now. Praise God. Healed and delivered right now. Praise God. Children, hyper children. You know, a lot of that stuff is fear. All of it's fear. Fear gets you uptight. All of it is. Hyper children that just don't want to be still. Don't give them redlin. You're creating a drug addict when you do that. You're creating in a child the idea that there's a pill to fix anything that's wrong with me. And you start that when they're five years old, you're going to have a heroin addict by the time they're 15 years, 18 years old. But not our children. No. Now, pray. Seek the Lord. I need to get Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll say that. If you have a hyper child, it's just, you know, off of the charts, stop the sugar. Well, he doesn't get any sugar. Does he eat bread? Yeah. Does he eat potatoes? Yeah. Does, does he eat chips? Yeah. All that stuff metabolizes into sugar. Oh, now, my you, Cole. now you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> oh, I'm looking. Oh, but Brother Copeland, I'm, I mean, you should, you know, that little devil will get all. I mean, talking about the child, yeah. but it is a little devil, not the child. But there's a low-level devil pushing that child. But the devil has to have something to work with in the natural. Do your homework. Find out. Yeah, but he throws things at me when he doesn't get his candy. You are bigger than him. Now then, Kelly did her biblical research with her children, and she corrected her children by spanking with a wooden spoon. Not a strap, that's child abuse. Not spanking is child abuse. Yes, but that's not correct. Well, she didn't hit him in the head with the spoon. No. She <laughs> felt like it, but she didn't. I don't think she did that. Now, Max, her youngest, there was a problem that he'd been having. And, um, and Edward, and he, 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 he was just, just a young. You know, I think he was about 14 or something like that. And uh, it just, he just couldn't, he, just really, and, and he read the Word, and that this thing just kept hounding him, and, and he'd get loose from it and free it a little while. And then he'd come back, and he just couldn't. And so he, he found it in the Scripture, and uh, were uh, the, uh, being corrected by a parent properly would bring deliverance. He went to the kitchen and got the spoon <laughs> and brought it to her and said, Mother, I got to have deliverance from this. I'm asking you please to spank me. Stood on the scripture. Never bothered him one day more until this day. But now, see, Kelly didn't fight him with a spoon. She loved him and read scripture to him and taught him. Now, what do you think is going to happen when he and Maddie have children? They'll be proper, properly raised very polite, mannerly children. Amen. Amen. And hell on the devil. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.